The talented Elizabeth Stanley has appeared on Broadway in Company, Cry Baby, Million Dollar Quartet, and On the Town. Now this golden voice Beltress is leading Jagged Little Pill as a seemingly picture-perfect Mary Jane Healy. Hear about her leaving opera to go to the dark side, why she's extra nice to cater waiters at Broadway openings, and more on this week's Show People. Welcome. It's cool. Good to see Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here. How's life in Alanis Morissette land? It's just rock and roll all the time. You, you've actually done a lot of rock and roll things, though. Like over over the years, like you you do have this big Broadway theater career, but you've you've been like the cool rock and roll chick in a few things. I guess. In this one, you're like maybe an unlikely rock because you're actually Mary Jane. Right. Mary, of course, if you're going to make a musical out of Jagged Little Pill. There has to be a character named Mary Jane. Yeah. Because there's a song, of course. Yeah. And, and that is you, Mary, yeah. Mary Jane Healy. Correct. So I guess they had to invent the last name. Yeah. No, that, was, that, that, that came out of nowhere. That yeah. wasn't in the song. I was just Diablo Cody's mind. <laughs> Diablo yeah. Cody, yeah. <laughs> and you're back with her because obviously you've lived with her yes. on and off for a while now, doing the show in readings and doing it out of town. Yeah. But now you're back. Yeah. You're back in a suburban mom land. Yep. Right? Yep. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's good to be back. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for so much time to work on the role because there are so many different, you know, things going on with her mm -hmm. that I feel like each time I've done it, I've like found another piece of her to be like, oh, and then this, and then this, and oh, that's mm -hmm. also in there. When you're doing a role and then you're doing it on stage and then you're not doing it for a while, but you know that you're going to be doing it again, waiting for the news for it to come to Broadway. And yeah. You knew it was coming and you knew you'd be playing the role again. Do you check in with her? I think yes and no uh -huh. because she is kind of troubled. I mean, I think like things in the world catch my eye in a different mm -hmm. way, you know, like opioids and parenting yeah. and articles and things like that catch my eye over time in a different way than they would if I weren't playing this role. Mm -hmm. Jagged Little Pill is a woke musical, which is fun. I mean, that's great to have entertainment addressing social issues yeah. in, in such a, a beautifully blended kind of way. Yeah. So w let's talk about what she's actually going through. The musical basically starts as kind of like this maybe perfect suburban family. Right. And then you sort of find out they all have a lot going on. Right. You mentioned opioids already. Yeah. So let's sort of dig into it a little bit for the people who don't know. Yeah, so she is addicted to opioids as a result of uh, being prescribed them for a car accident that she was in prior to the action right. of the play. But she's also a survivor of sexual assault, which is something that she's just sort of, you know, swallow it down. She's sort of buried it. Mm -hmm. the, the two of those things being tied together was something that I found. There was a New York Times article that was a doctor who was working with... Um, people in recovery in the Midwest and uh, you know it's just the epidemic is so sad and, and epic but um, we're saying it's really common for people to have suffered some type of abuse or trauma or you know because there's it just numbs yeah. so many things in addition to physical pain that there's a reason why it feels really good to be on it. Right and, and Mary Jane is really trying to just keep it together and keep up Yep. Right? It's, it's sort of like this keeping up with life, this thing yes. that, that we all sort of experience yep. on different levels. And that's something you've told me in the past that you can relate to. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone can relate to that. Yeah. I, but as an actor, especially, I, I sort of wonder, and you've had a great career, and I've seen you do so many amazing things over, over the years since uh, first seeing you in Company, yeah. uh, which was your Broadway debut. But um, seeing people you work with have opportunities and moments, and that how you relate to sort of her experience of trying to keep up in this suburban town and her in a totally different way? Yeah, I mean, I think I can relate to it in a bunch of different ways that, you know, I'm from a small town in the yeah. Midwest, so um, I really understand that dynamic of like, you know everybody, you know what everyone's right. doing, you know, right. that that's always there. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, as an actor, like you said, it's really easy to you know, compare and despair, as they mm -hmm. say. Sure. Um, you know, I myself have, I feel like, ways that I know how to deal with that that, like, keep me from going crazy. Because right. um, <laughs> it's not worth it, right? You know, yeah. like, I, you know, what's for you is not going to pass you by. Yeah. And so the more you can really, like, celebrate and, and draw yourself to the people who are doing well, then that draws you closer to the things that you want, right? Yeah. But that's not to say I don't have dark days where I'm like, what? where's mine? Sure. But it must be nice uh, with something like Jagged Little Pill, and I know you did it out of town at ART, yeah. but you, you kept working on the show, and it must be nice to sort of have the comfort of knowing, oh, 
I have this project coming up. I, I have this role. Yes. I'm work, that must be like a really nice, freeing yes, feeling. It is. <laughs> An experience. Yeah, yeah. It's the best because I think that's the last thing you want to be thinking about when you're trying to be creative yeah. and, and create something and dig into a role. You don't want to be thinking like, like well, it's also an audition. I have to be, yes. Right, yes. like I'm working on, I'm doing this lab and it's also an audition. At the end of it, I don't know if I actually Right, if, got they're, the if they're just gonna take all my creative ideas and give them to someone else. <laughs> sure, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but no, I felt um, I felt very supported yeah. by Diane Paulus and mm -hmm. City Larby and, and Diablo Cody were really um, creatively collaborative with this whole process, mm -hmm. so I felt very safe with them. Was there ever an initial fear of, what if I'm just not cool enough for a last Mars hat? I mean, what was the original meeting of Obviously. her like? I mean, she had to come, <laughs> did, did she come see you perform the first time? What was that, what was that um, meeting? I saw you put in your diary that you hugged. Yes, Alanis. Yeah, oh my that, God, yes. Yeah, You've really that. been doing a deep dive into my social media. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she is an angel. I mean, she is like what you want her to be. Uh -huh. If you're a fan of hers, she is that. The first time that we met, she came to a run through in the rehearsal studio before we Went to Cambridge, is that right? I think that was when. And she just like, you know, snuck in in her like big comfy sweater and like no makeup and she gave every single person a hug and was like, oh, I've been watching you on the rehearsal videos they've been sending me and, oh, you know, she just, um, it truly feels like she's there to collaborate creatively. Like she's really thrilled, I think, to see this music deepened. Mm -hmm. But she's also there to receive it it feels mm. like she said that, like she's never received these songs. She's always right. given them, yeah. right? And that's kind of beautiful because that energy is very clear from her. It never feels like she's there to be like, well, actually that's not how it's sung. You know, <laughs> like she doesn't right. feel that way at all. Right, Yeah. right. And you get to premiere a song, right? Yeah. Or yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a, how many new songs in the there show? There are two new songs. Two new songs, yeah. okay. So yeah. you're actually premiering one of, that's amazing. It's fine, it's no big deal. <laughs> and it's like a recording of it and everything. Like you, yeah. you have a cast album and yeah. yeah. No, it's really yeah. thrilling. I'm kind of like, wait, what? Oh. Yeah, you're super cool. Thanks. We're, we're going to talk more with Elizabeth Stanley after this break. are back with Elizabeth Stanley, now in Jagged Little Pill. Hi. I want to go back a little bit. I've known you a long time, but I don't know everything about you, and I want to know about <laughs> Jan and Chris and oh Iowa God. and the Midwest and piano and okay, great. opera and all that <laughs> stuff and playing a pig. I want to know all. I want to I wanna go through all of it. Okay, great. So Here we go. let's just, let's go back to the, and by the way, I'm really upset. One of the biggest regrets of my life is I didn't get to see you do Bridges Madison County. Oh. You did the national tour of that. It's one of I my did, favorite yeah. scores. I know. But you, I would have heard you singing about Iowa. Yeah. Because, yeah, Francesca yes. was, was suffering through a life in Iowa. Well, yeah. <laughs> Beautifully suffering yeah. to great news. <laughs> So Jen and Chris are your parents. That's right. What were they into? Like what, um, were they from? Oh my God. They're from Iowa and, okay. They're both from really small towns in Iowa. Okay. Yep, my, um, my dad's dad was a beekeeper and my mom's dad was a farmer. Oh, um, okay. So we're very Midwestern agricultural earth, peeps. Nature, yep. nature people. We I saw a picture up. of you in a barn. I saw like a sultry teenage version of you oh in my a God. barn. Yes. I, we, we looked through your Instagram. Your Instagram <laughs> account's very entertaining, by the way. There's a lot of throwbacks. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I was trying really hard in that photo. Um, it was a small town. You, yeah, like a okay. town of a thousand people. When we moved to Illinois, we moved to a very small town. My dad worked for the Rural Electric Corporation. Okay. So we lived in a rural part of the state. Three hours from St. Louis was the closest okay. major city. Wow. Five hours from Chicago. So you had a lot of time with yourself. I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And brothers, two brothers. Yeah, I have two brothers. I'm in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And so what was that solitude time like? There was no social media. There was no FaceTime. You couldn't yeah. like find other people out in the nope. <laughs> in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I mean, I had great friends. Sure. But, you know, especially like before you can drive and things like that. I remember the summers where I was just like, hey. Um, but I, <laughs> I'm grateful for it because I think that's why I like... I'm a creative person. Uh -huh. I, I I was always making things. I think. Like what kind of things were you making? Uh, like arts and craftsy things. Mm -hmm. You know, just since the time I was little, I I loved that. And um, you know, so I knit and I paint and I draw and I I don't know. I would like write songs or you know, 
do a personal makeover. I don't know. I was just always like doing stuff. You found your own. Yeah. But then how did the Quincy Community Theater come into your life? I love how did you this deep dive that you've how'd done. How did you find that place? <laughs> Tell me about that place. Um, our neighbor, like down the road, was someone who was interested in that. And so her daughters, who were my friends, were like going to audition for, okay. I think, the best Christmas pageant ever was the first thing I ever did there. And Subtle title. The yes. best Christmas pageant. You know. The, that's the best one. You know, it's the best one. There. Yeah, so that was the first thing I did. And I was in like the uh, kind of ensemble feature as the angel choir. Okay. Um, Were you really into it? Were you excited about it? Were you just kind of like doing it and seeing what happens? Yeah, or? I was kind of doing it and seeing what happened. Okay. But I was like, oh, this seems like it might be really fun. Uh -huh. and, and it was. I loved it. You know, it was really just about getting kids involved and having fun and telling a story. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in that sense, I'm grateful to have grown up in a smaller area because there wasn't like the pressure like no one was auditioning for Broadway no right. one you know like no one was becoming a YouTube star like right. it was there was none <laughs> right. of that that there is now um, or that there was then if you grew up closer to New York and then you started doing it in school in high school right you, you well my high like? school didn't have a program because it was okay. so small so there was like a drama club that you know, you the know. Velveteen Rabbit with the tie-dye shorts Scrapped. love that that was an interesting look did you come up with that look I'm was that a costume to say what was that, that I did come up with that look <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, you know, we've come a long way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I tried to be involved in the things that my school did have, but I was always so jealous. Quincy, Illinois was like 30 miles from where I grew up, which is where the community theater was. Okay. They had an amazing high school that always did like mm. a huge giant musical, and I was so jealous that my high school didn't have that. At what point did you start thinking like, this looks like what I want to do? I think when I was in high school, so I started taking voice lessons from this woman, Monica Schultz, who also was an incredible mentor of mine. And she was just so lovely and so encouraging. And then she eventually sort of passed me on to another teacher, uh, Marianne Spangler Scott, who had been an opera singer and was a um, on voice faculty at Millican University at the time. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so she was my voice teacher all through high school. And so then I think she was only professional artist I'd ever known you know mm. someone who had like really made a living right. and so I that became my kind of like model so I sure. thought oh I'll be I'll be an opera singer yeah, like okay. I love music I love singing so that's what I initially went to school to do so I went to Indiana University as a voice major right um, and I was such a big nerd like in high school like I loved the black and white of classical music like mm. there's a right way and a wrong way to do it great I like mm -hmm. boundaries I felt good about it okay um, but then when I got there um, you know, I became friends with the people who did musicals, and they were like, come to the dark side, <laughs> try belting, <laughs> side. you know, all those things. Um, and so by the time I graduated from Indiana, I knew that I really wanted to pursue theater instead of opera. So Christine Daae and Fenton of the Opera, that, could that have ever happened? Sure, I'm yeah, that would have now. been like a dream for sure when I was in high school. <laughs> I was at the piano, like really trying to hit that high E, you know? Like, <laughs> that seems like a good merging. Of yes. It could still happen. Yeah, I mean, who knows? <laughs> Anyone listening? What were you like when you came to New York? What was that girl like? Uh, that girl was scrappy. scrappy. Um, <laughs> I was, my first job was as a cater waiter. Oh. So I was rocking the polyester tux at nice. a lot of events. Nice, okay. Um, Any theater events? Like yeah, were you around Broadway yeah. people? I'm pretty sure that I was a waiter at the opening night of Hairspray. Oh, yeah. I was there. Oh, well. At Roseland? Did you remember me? I don't remember you. Maybe um, you handed me an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's something I think about that all the time when I'm at an event like the staff. I'm like, I know exactly what you're doing right now. And then uh, you heard about a job in Cincinnati, right, to um, seduce Raul Esparza. <laughs> right. Yes. As I've said my, yes. As, Thank you. As my favorite, I love April in nice. company. It's like such a great role. It's such a great role. And you were fantastic in it. But again, it wasn't Thank really you. Broadway. It was to do a job out of town. And yeah. then it came to Broadway. Right. And you were right. like, suddenly, I'm on Broadway. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I made it to Broadway. And everyone in your town was like, she's what? on Broadway. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like that, that. that's... What is that? Broadway. Okay. Yeah. And you were playing instruments. I mean, it was, a, it was a, this one of those crazy John Doyle <laughs> productions where you can't just... Be yeah. a great singer, actress, dancer. Got to play the tuba also. You also play the tuba. Turns out, got to play it. 
<laughs> so you had to do a lot to make your Broadway debut, but yeah. it was worth it. What was it like for you? Oh God, it was so worth it. In fact, I mean, I don't think that it would have happened if I hadn't played instruments, you know what I mean? I yeah. felt like that actually was like my sort of in. It was magical. I mean, I think I was wonderfully naive in that I remember booking the job in Cincinnati and people being like, that's gonna be a Broadway show. Yeah. And I was like, what? No. I don't think so. There was definitely a hunger to bring company back to Broadway. Just yeah, as there is again this but I season. was, I know, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm so excited to see it. But it was really amazing. I mean, I love John Doyle. He's just like someone who really changed my life. I yeah. feel like just the way that he works was really special. And I feel like he's kind of an actor whisperer. I feel like he brought performances out of all of us that, yeah. you know, we've never done again. And Raul was so lovely too. I felt like he was like a, you know, a big brother kind of taking me mm -hmm. under his wing. And, and then just doing it on Broadway was like, what's happening? And I remember we went to Sondheim's house wow. and, you know, I was like, okay, I love this. What's going <laughs> on? Um, yeah, the whole thing was really a magical time. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk more about your career, the great career of Elizabeth Stanley after this break. We're back with Elizabeth Stanley, AKA Mary Jane Healy, over at the Broadhurst Theater. I was so excited when you got this job in Jagged Little Pill Thanks. because I've loved your talents ever since I saw you in company. Thank and you. I've loved seeing all the things you've done over the years, but I was really like excited that you get this opportunity because you. you know, Broadway careers are really interesting and, yeah. and you don't really have control over where they're going all the time. No, not at and all. And this is the nice, big, juicy role. Now it's funny, I was thinking, I was thinking about April and mm -hmm. company, you know, the sexy, funny stewardess, and then you were the sexy uh, girlfriend and crybaby, right. Allison, I love Allison, the sexy girl in Million Dollar Quartet. There was, that was sort of like a little bit of a path, you yes. know, and you were fantastic and on the town. But this is like a meaty, leading will become an iconic musical theater role and you get to create it. I'm so thrilled when, when I see opportunities like this happen for, for someone like you. Thank you. And, uh, you. and sometimes, you've told me before, you sometimes you kind of wonder, will an opportunity like this happen as yeah. you're building a career? Well, I remember saying to my manager during my sexy phase, um, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, I just, I really want to play something that has more to it, yeah. you know, and he's like, well, <laughs> You won't be sexy forever, so just enjoy it while it lasts, basically. <laughs> like, you know, in a very loving way, he was saying that. I was like, okay, okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, this sort of just f fell into my lap in a, in a way. Like, yeah. you know, I got the audition and I did a self-tape and then I got the workshop of it. Uh, so it, it is, it's crazy how things just come to you and then, you know, other things you feel like you work for and you work for and right. they're not for you. Right, well, sometimes the, the work pays off in ways that you're not in control of. Right. I mean, do you, do you feel like a little bit of a veteran now? I mean, you have a lot of great roles under well, your belt. Well, cool. <laughs> but it also feels like you're also about to just, you know, introduce yourself in a different way to so many people with this role. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that you, you do have this great history, but you're also going to be sort of fresh for all kinds of people that come to see the, this a musical and, you know, who are maybe not even really Broadway people. Yeah. So how does it feel for you to be at this juncture in your, on your resume? <laughs> really exciting yeah. um, and and yeah I'm, I'm so grateful it definitely is the kind of role that you know I've been dreaming of doing for a long time mm -hmm. I'm glad that it didn't happen before mm -hmm. in many ways because it is just to be it's nice to be a little older and I feel yeah. really grounded and and sane about all of it and mm -hmm. what you know potentially all the things that like maybe could be but also potentially all the things that it won't be. So I guess I feel kind of fine with that in whatever mm -hmm. way that all of the trips fall surrounding the, you know, the whole show. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to have that perspective of Crybaby, for example, in many ways. It was like very heartbreaking. It was interesting because I, it's almost like now I wonder would that show have lasted longer? And it got Tony nominations and it was nominated for Best Musical and it just sort yeah. of, it was like this big thing and it was after Hairspray. Yeah. So you went from, you know, Handing rich to Jarrett Winokur and hors d'oeuvre to being the star of the That's next right. John Waters musical, which is yeah. which is a great path. <laughs> and then it just it was all this anticipation that just sort of like deflated kind of quickly. Yeah. Was that sort of a difficult one? Yeah, it was because you know it was my first time being a lead, a sure. leading lady in a Broadway right. show and originating something. And so again, you know, how there was so much potential there. Um, but it was right at the time that like the internet was starting to really be an influencer. And the haters were out. 
know? Right. I remember the producers calling us to the stage during previews and saying, don't worry, the show is not closing. We know that there is a rumor that it's closing. And we hadn't even opened yet, you know? <laughs> and so there was just like doom and gloom all around. Um, but I'm really, really grateful for that experience. It was so humbling and yeah. it taught me so much. It really like, I had no idea how hard it is to create a Broadway show until mm. I'd been through that experience. Because company, because it was a revival, right. it, it was it was kind of easy and blissful in, yeah. in a way that I didn't, I didn't know the other side of it. So I'm grateful for having that wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like wisdom is something you sort of earn over over the years. Like you said, you enter a project with a very different perspective, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so this time you're kind of like ready for anything. Yeah, the expectations are low. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's just like, oh God, anything could happen. Yeah. How is that company over at Jagged Little Pill? You guys oh, seem super I tight. I love them. Uh, we, had them all, we had all of you standing here for a great photo shoot a few yeah. months ago. Yeah. Um, it seems like a, a great family. Oh, you can see the individual talent in every person on that stage. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm wowed by all of them. But it is, I think, the nature of the piece because you know it handles kind of delicate and sensitive yeah. subject matter. It's required each of mm -hmm. us to bring our full selves to the piece and, um, and that sometimes that's messy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that brings us together. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be uh, one of the senior members of the company? Well, I mean, you, you look fantastic, and you're still very thank young. Thank you. But, but th yeah, there, no, I'm like the oldest woman in the cast. Which um, is, which is that, that must be interesting. Do you, it do, is. Is there a different responsibility when you're suddenly dealing with people who have never been on a Broadway show before? Or twelve Broadway debuts in our cast. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. I know. Yeah, so you have a different responsibility. I mean, I've heard people talk about that. Like actors yeah. talk about them when that when that changes over. It's like, oh. I'm going to be sort of the, the one of the wise people here. Yes, yes, I better watch my words. Um, yeah, but I, I like it. I have to say, yeah. I, I feel that sense of responsibility for uh -huh. being, you know, being a, a good leader of the cast. By my nature, I'm a pretty calm person, and so I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of glad that people look to me, I guess, in a way, because I feel generally speaking like I can be a good influence mm -hmm. but yeah I mean it's it's also weird like it's it's weird to be playing the mom and I think people then look at me like you know like their mom or something <laughs> um, and I'm like I'm not that old right um it's also I love working with people who are younger than me because I learn a lot from them you know about Instagram and everything else but <laughs> but um you know it's nice to like stay in in touch with like other adults uh -huh. who just happen to be younger than you. The connection that people have with this music is pretty powerful, and I know you've yeah. experienced it. And you know, it's interesting when Broadway musicals use famous music. You look at something like Carole King musical, right? Beautiful, just had this amazing run. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that music really has a connection oh, with people. Oh, God, yeah. And then other things, maybe the music doesn't have the connection people thought it did. Right. But I feel like this is one of those um, People so. feel this music deeply. Yes. <laughs> and yep. I'm assuming you've, you've seen that. Yeah. And you can feel it. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes there's a reaction to a song that I'm very aware. I'm like, that had little to do with what I just did, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, that's so historical for, mm -hmm. for the audience member. Like, it triggers an emotional response that has been living within them for 20 years. Yeah. You know, the audience reaction to this show is unlike any other show I've done. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited for you. Everyone needs to see Jagged Little Pill. Thanks. It's at the Broadhurst Theater. I don't think it's going anywhere for a while. And I'm excited I hope for you're you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much Thanks for being for here. Me. So everyone go see Jagged Little Pill. Thank you for watching. We'll see you Ooh. next time.